Hello again guys, about a week ago at this point I unboxed and showed you a little bit about the Micro M3D printer. Well, since that time it has run pretty much non-stop. I have been printing most of the things that I have found on the internet at this point. Now, as I showed you before, I started off printing this part of this. This is a filament spool holder, and what I printed was the little part that actually looks kind of like the, uh, the thing you'd put on top of a piece of pizza to keep the box from resting on it. Uh, immediately after that, I printed this other component, the part that actually attaches it to the printer. Now, I didn't mention in the earlier one exactly how long these prints were taking. It's taking hours and hours to do each print. This first one took a couple of hours. The handle here took, I think, three and a half hours. I'll be showing you time-lapse footage of all these things, and you'll notice here in a minute the time-lapse footage is actually going to get a little bit better because I started out doing the time-lapses using my Mobius camera, as I showed you. I very quickly decided that, wait a minute, I've got a couple of spare phones laying around here. Let's just try and see if Android has any sort of options out there for time-lapses. And there was an excellent option out there, completely free. There is a paid version available that gives you a few more options. So I did end up moving over to that. It was a $3 application, but it allows me to record as long as I want, 1080p quality footage, excellent quality. So I definitely could justify that. So when it was all said and done, this is what it came out to be. This is the very first thing I really printed and it hooked onto the printer. I was able to put my small spools of filament on there and it held it very well. The problem I had with it immediately was it was supposed to be just sort of a snap together. You put it on and you click it down and that worked, but as soon as I would put any pressure on it, it would just immediately pop out here at the top. There wasn't enough of a lip to it. I did print these both on, I think, medium with medium fill, so they're not the most sturdy that they could be, but with a little dab of super glue, actually more than a little dab of super glue, right here in this little connection point, it's been rock solid stable ever since, and I've been using it as long as I had those first two filament spools. In the first week, I've pretty much gone through the first two filament spools that I had. They were both half pound, so it's not a huge amount of filament there, and look Looking at it, I, I have a little bit of my clear filament left and probably a third of the spool of the blue left, so I haven't completely run out of it yet. But I did start looking around. I was looking in the M3D forum and I was looking over on Amazon and one of the really highly recommended filaments I found out there was from a company called Hatchbox. So I ordered one of their spools of PLA. It was 2.2 pounds, one kilogram, and it was $21, whereas the M3D filaments are, I think, $13 for a half pound. So it was a much better deal in my opinion. And most of the people in the forum seem to be really, really pleased with it. Anyway, moving back to some of the things I printed. After this was done and after I used it for pretty much a week, I decided, like I said, I was moving to a bigger filament spool and it was not going to work on this, so I started printing a larger filament spool holder. This was actually designed by one of the guys on the M3D forum and it's seven different pieces. So you print three pieces for each side and then one bar across the top. And like I said, every little piece takes quite a lot of time to actually print out. So for each of the components of this, it was between five and six hours to print. So the total for this, we're looking at around 40 hours invested on it. Not really optimal, not really ideal in terms of having something that's good and sturdy long term. So I ended up also ordering a solid metal filament spool holder. It was like 16 or $17 on Amazon. It should be here in a couple of days. And at the same time, I ordered some ABS plastic. I've heard that that's really, really difficult to print with, but I really want to give it a shot because it's a lot more flexible. And a lot of the stuff I've been printing would probably do a lot better in ABS. Anyway, back to some of the other things I've been printing. One of you guys in the comments suggested that I print planetary gears. When I was at the AT&T hackathon, they had some 3D printers going and they printed one of these for us. This was very cool to see and this is the kind of thing that I imagined you wanted me to look at so I started looking for that. Uh, this is about the closest I got on the first examination and it does sort of work but it's not perfect. It, do, it binds up very very easily. It's nice to see that I can print something that moves with a very minimal amount of effort. And this was printed at really, really low quality. So I'm gonna give it another shot down the road. There was another actual model out there that I ended up trying that looked a lot closer to what I got from the AT&T Summit. But every time I printed it, and I printed it I think three times, it would start off and then it would immediately shift over. So I think there may have been something wrong with the model. Uh, all the way, the rest of the way up, it printed perfectly. It looks beautiful if you get really close and look at the detail of it. Looks very, very nice, but the bottom of it uh, this is after I've cleaned it up a little bit. The bottom of it came out just absolutely horribly. So I'm gonna look for a better model. This is definitely solid. I printed this on medium with medium fill and it took, like I said, about three hours, but unfortunately it did screw up and it doesn't move and it's just solid. It's a solid block of plastic at this point. And actually one of the things that I've printed that I really, really enjoyed, even though I didn't print it well enough, was this. This came from the Microsoft Store Thingiverse thing. Uh, they had a bunch of different blades and you print this, this was in particular a five blade uh, that you put onto a straw. And then you spin it back and forth like this, you let it go, you just give it a little spin and it takes off. It flies around and it comes back to you. 
Now, unfortunately, the very first day that I had made this, uh, I was showing my wife how to, how to use it, you know, and spinning it around like that and, sh and shooting it up in the air. And when I caught it one time, one of the blades just snapped right off. A little bit of super glue again though, went right back together, no problems. So that is the one lesson that I would take away from this. If you're gonna be doing any sort of 3D printing, some sort of Gorilla Glue, super glue, crazy glue, anything like that is definitely worth having around. And this one actually only took about half an hour to 45 minutes to print, so I may print another one of these a little bit more solidly with the Hatchbox PLA. Now everything was not hunky-dory, not everything printed perfectly. I had quite a few screw-ups. One of them that I was really, really upset about was this. This, if you look at it from this side, it's a OnePlus phone dock, and it looks awesome. I mean, it's got the little logo imprinted on it, and when you start to turn it, it still looks awesome until you get to there, and you'll notice it's only about half of the size of a OnePlus. However, I can actually stick the OnePlus in there, and it holds up. It'll stand there, like I've left it on my desk for hours and hours with it like this, but I'm gonna reprint it just to make sure I get the entire thing going. The really cool thing about this dock is that it has holes in it. It has, you can only see two holes in it right now. One's for the USB plug, one on each side is gonna be for the speakers so that they will shoot the sound down, echo around through this chamber, and then come out the front echoing the sound toward you. That is definitely an awesome feature of this. So like I said, I'm gonna be reprinting this. Uh, the problem that I had was the two times I tried to print it, I forgot to turn on supports. Uh, I tried it one time sitting down like this and it got about a part of the way up and suddenly just started screwing up. I turned it sideways in the model viewer and again, made it part of the way up and then all of a sudden, you might be able to see right here, a lot of the support was needed. So I was kind of manually holding, <laughs> holding a little spatula to it to hold it up in place and I realized it just wasn't gonna work out, so I gave up on it. Now in terms of docks that did work, and this is, I think, potentially my favorite print I've done so far, this was one of the first ones I did. I did the uh, the little spool holder first, and then I think right after that, I did this. I saw Russell Hawley mention this over on Google+. Plus. As soon as he had started working with 3D printers, he printed this out, and I printed it out as well. It is a little tentacle cell phone holder, and I've been using this thing literally daily. You stick the phone in it right there and it'll hold it very nice, very secure on a desk, no problems. This one was very super, super simple to print. And actually I've, I've, I'm surprised at how solid it is given that I printed it low quality with I think hollow thick walls. So it's not even got a fill. It's not cross hatched all the way through. It's hollow on the inside, but it's solid. Now I'm not gonna go grabbing and squeezing on it or anything cause that's kind of silly but it's hollow, it's lightweight, and it gets the job done. Like I said, I may reprint this one just because it never hurts to have another one because I do have two desks here and I've got a desk at my office and everything. And for those of you out there interested in the quadcopter side of things, there are loads and loads of things for quadcopters that can be printed. Although from what I understand, the grand majority of stuff you're gonna wanna print on a quadcopter, you're gonna wanna use ABS because ABS is a lot more flexible than PLA. Unfortunately, all I've got here and all I've ever used is PLA. So I started looking around and I found these. There are models out there for little teeny tiny Cheerson CX-10 prop guards. So since this isn't a Cheerson CX-10, I actually ended up scaling it up by 5%. Wasn't a huge amount of scale up. I put it on a relatively low, it wasn't completely low, but it wasn't medium, set of detail and fill. Uh, and this is how it turned out. You know, it, it, they all fit on. I had to do a little bit of cleanup to them afterward to actually get the little X cross pattern on the bottom to fit. But it fits on quite nicely. Unfortunately, because it is PLA and because this is a teeny tiny little copter, it doesn't fly particularly well with them on. So I'm gonna try reprinting it once I get some ABS in here and I'll probably do it again relatively thin. I think I even scaled up the, the Z axis which made it a little bit thicker than it probably should be. So maybe I'll scale down the Z, make it uh, a decent quality in ABS and give it another shot because it's just a little bit too heavy to actually be able to fly with this, but still, it's nice to know that I could make some reasonable quality prop guards to replace, because like I said, I broke one of the prop guards almost immediately flying this little thing. And you know what, the last thing I think I will show you, the last thing that I printed that I've been absolutely in love with, it's been on my desk ever since I printed it, and I might print it again because it didn't turn out as well as I would like, is this little guy. It's the Yoda Buddha. I don't know why I like it as much as I do. It's just one of those things. As soon as I got a 3D printer, I started looking online to see if there were any Yoda models, and immediately I noticed Yoda Buddha, and that's just something that really appealed to me. Now, the quality on the lower half, the Buddha half, was excellent, but unfortunately, for whatever reason, around the head, and maybe that just has to do with the model, but around the head, it didn't seem to attach to the body particularly right. So something is wrong there. I don't know if I want to reprint it because I'm afraid that the head will just pop off. Uh, I haven't pulled on this. It feels solid enough. And I think I actually printed this one hollow as well, but still, right here around the head, I'm guessing it just wasn't quite connected to the model 100% right. 
So there's a line around the head where it's just not quite right. But I love the look of it and I love it as a display piece just to sort of show what you can do with 3D printing. Now I don't know if you can hear it or not in the background, but I do still have the 3D printer running. So I do have more stuff coming. Hopefully you've enjoyed a couple of these time lapses I've been able to show you. If there's anything in particular you'd like to see me print, definitely let me know down in the comment section below. I'm gonna try to do one of these once a week. I'm not gonna do quite as much per video as I did in this one. I'm still absolutely loving this hobby. Aside from a few quirks here and there with the printer, it's been going absolutely absolutely amazing. One thing I have noticed is I do have to clean out little jams in the printer every now and again, particularly if I just leave it alone overnight. The plastic will actually congeal inside of the printer and when I heat it up it doesn't pass on through. So I end up normally having to change the filament, meaning pull the filament back out, stick a little piece of metal wire down in there, and have it congeal some of the plastic that has just been heated up back onto it and pull that out from the inside. So not the best that it could absolutely be. But doing that has made it be much more consistent because after the first few days I was having problems over and over again with it just clogging up and not wanting to print right. But since I've been doing it that way it's been much much better. So I hope you guys are enjoying this kind of video. Let me know if this is the kind of thing you'd like to see down in the comment section below. Keep in mind that all of these prints are taking a very long time to do. We're talking three to five hours per print unless it's something small. Like I said this little thing is only about 30 to 45 minutes, but some of the bigger, more intricate things can take between five to 10 hours. Some things, if they're big enough, can take even as much as 20 hours. This little thing, again, one of my favorites, probably only took about three, three and a half hours. Anyway, I've been rambling on for an awful long time now. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hit that thumbs up if you like this video. Subscribe to receive more videos when they become available, and I will see you again next time.